I want to bring a voice, your voice, to the White House. Barack Obama will be step one president. In the Star Poll yesterday, you saw a big message sent to Washington. And I don't know how much God has to do to get the attention of the politicians. We've had an earthquake, we've had a hurricane. I will not seek a fifth congressional term. Rest assured, this decision was not impacted in any way by the recent inquiries into the activities of my former presidential campaign. What an up and down from Michelle Bachman. Let's talk about that on the round table again. Let's bring everybody back in. Ariana Huffington, Paul as you go, Gwen Eiffel, David Pluff, and Carl Rovin. And Ariane, let me start uh, with you right here. I, I guess uh, Michelle Bachman never lived up at the potential of winning that Iowa straw poll. <laughs> at the beginning of this last uh, election cycle. And by the time she got out, I mean, we kind of called it a surprise, but it wasn't really. Well, I think what was a surprise was the reason she gave, that the Constitution limits the president mm -hmm. to eight years, to just two terms, and therefore she has also <laughs> served eight years. She, she considered herself, in a way, the shadow Another president. Hit, yes. Yeah. And so now she's leaving, and the hour straw poll is becoming now more irrelevant than ever. But what is interesting is that, basically, like Sarah Palin, um, Michelle Bachman was a sort of colorful distraction. She had no legislative record. Uh, she didn't really do anything in the House that she she cannot do outside the house. A lot of her career was based on grandstanding, so she can continue doing that. Does it say anything, Karl Rove, about the strength of the Tea Party or where the Tea Party goes from here? Actually, it will be an opening for the Tea Party. Um, Michelle Bachman was the chairman of the Congressional Tea Party Caucus, and in that position, did nothing. Now the position was open. Someone will, someone in the next year will. Uh, accept the chairmanship of it, and they may do something with it, and we'll see. But it also uh, guarantees that uh, that seat, which had been thought to be very much up for grabs, she barely won last time around, ran well behind Mitt Romney, is now safely Republican. The, the Democrat who ran last time around, a self-funder named Graves, already announced he's, as, after Bachman pulled out, he pulled out as well. So safe Republican seat Dave, and, and a, Democrat, Demo uh, a Democrat recruitment the Democrats failure. are going to miss her. Terribly. <laughs> uh, you know, it's fun having her and the Sarah Palins of the world on the scene because they sort of define this modern Republican Party. Now there's others to replace her. You know, you've got Ted Cruz and, 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 and others that will fill the, the bill. But I think it's important because right now that's where so much of the energy in the Republican Party is. And what we really need is the more common sense mainstream Republicans. And you're seeing some in the Senate around immigration, around efforts at a ground bar bargain, around the deficit and economy kind of rise up here. And uh, because that has been a very insidious problem for the last two or three years, where the energy is with the Bachmans of the world, and people are afraid in the Republican Party to step out because they don't want to run. Let's run talk power about back. immigration. Yeah, you see Marco Rubio uh, is a reasonable mainstream Republican. Uh, you no, not immigration. Not immigration. Not two years ago. <laughs> Raul, Republican Party God bless President Obama. Creating some fascinating politics. You had Harry Reid this week saying he thinks it's going to be easy to get 60 votes uh, in the Senate, uh, yet you still have a very complicated situation in the House, even though the House leaders, John Boehner, Paul Ryan, Eric Kenner, all want immigration reform. It's not clear the rank and file is going to go along. No, I agree with that. It's still going to be a, an, an important fight. I mean, it's got three, it got three votes out of committee then from the Republicans, including Orrin Hatch, which was very significant. I think it'd be very good for Republicans who favor immigration reform to get 10, 15, 20 Republican votes in the Senate. I don't think they're going to get there, but it'd be good if they could. And then that would create more momentum to get it in the House. But there's no question there's tension within the Republican Party about uh, on, on immigration. There, you have people, leaders, Paul Ryan, for example, Marco Rubio, who want to, who, who say, look, we, we need to do do this for the economy. We need to do this to help entitlements because younger immigrants create more growth and pay, are able to finance Social Security going down the road. We need to do this to attract the most talented people in the world. That's the that that growth wing of the party versus those who are more law and order oriented and want to frankly, put more uh, guns on the border. Well, here's a test of the Tea Party. Every a couple of years we say, ah, the Tea Party is going to transform the party. It is so powerful. In fact, as Carl just pointed out, it, it doesn't really become much of anything in a national setting. Michelle Bachman leaving doesn't make that much difference. But locally, in government, in, I mean, in, in governor's races, in state races, even in congressional races, they can still have a lot of power. But, and on things like immigration for, reform, they can drive the divisions which make that make progress impossible. Yeah, let's be careful about characterizing the Tea Party as being anti-immigrant. For example, in the House Gang of Eight, four Republicans and four Democrats, one of the four Republicans is Raul Labrador, a Tea Party 
interestingly enough, Puerto Rican Republican from Idaho who is an immigration attorney. But it also there, as, the, as sort of the lead among the four Republicans, is Judge John Carter of Texas, who opposed immigration reform in 2006 and 2007, but as a judge has come to a reasoned, sensible approach to getting this thing done and believes it's time to get it done now that we've got control on the board. So, so I, you know, look, it, 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 the, the gang of eight, I appreciate your kind comments about Tea Party or Marco Rubio and his, and his thoughtful leadership in the Senate on immigration. <laughs> uh, you, you can say that at the end of this segment so they, they can run that one. With you can say God bless, God bless Marco yes. Rubio. Yeah, God bless Senator Marco <laughs> Rubio. But, uh, but, but this is going to be an interesting test. Paul is absolutely right. I mean, I think that there, I do, I'm sort of a little bit more optimistic. I think there will be a significant number of Senators. Republicans voting for this bill and I think also the House will arrive at a different place but with a comprehensive bill and then we'll spend the fall in serious negotiations in a conference committee. And between one of the, the biggest House complications Senate. could be health care. Could be. I, I would say this. I, I do give on this particular issue, Senator Rubin and other Republicans, a lot of credit because it's not easy right now uh, to put yourself out there because you're going to get criticized from the right. I, I think that I agree with Paul. I think it's going to be hard. Uh, I think there's a huge economic message that needs to be lifted up more about allowing us to compete. We shouldn't be educating these kids here and sending them home to compete against us. We, they need to stay here, build businesses here, be part of our great uh, innovation economy. But I think if it passes the Senate, it won't be with 60 or 61. I think you'll get you know, high 60s, 70s. So you have the Senate passing something the President's ready to sign. I think that puts enormous pressure on the House. And I think the only question is, what's the pathway John Boehner chooses? Is he going to try and pass something that he feels he's got to get 150 plus of his members, or is he willing to let a lot of his members walk to heal the party. Yeah, there, there is one scandal here that uh, neither scandal? Democrats nor Republicans are talking about, and this is what the Obama administration is doing with deportations. And that's probably somewhere where Karl Rove will say, God bless Obama again, because more people have been deported under the Obama administration than over the whole two terms of, the, of George Bush. And we've had, for example, since 2010, 200,000 parents of American citizens being deported for minor offenses. This is a real tragedy. And if this was being done under George Bush, Democrats would have been up in arms. Well, for, you know, we're enforcing the law, taking border security seriously. Uh, there have been adjustments, obviously. The, the deferred action decision around DREAM Act kids was important. Those kids should not be sent home. But, they but were this being speaks, sent Ariana, home. to why we need a solution. We need a comprehensive but also solution. We need some here. accountability, David, because right now this is, goes right against what the what the president professes to believe in, the detention and deportation system it is an absolute nightmare for families. It's a bit like a gulag system. Now here's the problem. It's here's the, the problem. You just, you just identified the problem, which is can Washington chew gum and walk at the same time? There is huge, There are huge policy agenda items which the president would like to focus on, but scandals, disagreement within his own party, attacks from Republicans, whatever you want to call it, all means that th these things cannot necessarily happen. If, if Eric Cantor can boast, as he did last week, that he held more than 100 oversight hearings in the House in May, just in May, that's what the House is focused on. Are they focused on finding a middle ground on things like immigration reform? Well, they yes, they are sure. at the same time. But Oh, it, 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 it's Cantor still, is trying to do that. He's very trying, but, uh, but David has identified, I think, the key strategic question for the House leadership. Are they willing to let this go through the House, passed by a majority of Democrats, uh, and, and sort of uh, rather than go by what they call the Hastert rule, that nothing can come to the floor that doesn't have a majority I don't think they've support. made that decision yet, and I think that they may have to divide it up more piecemeal to get rolling coalitions, that you can get parts of it through with majority votes, maybe on some parts, like, uh, 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 for example, the overall Order legalization. They, they, the Most Republicans don't vote for it, but you can package that together, send it over to the Senate, and then you can work out a deal. There's one other threat to immigration, which we haven't talked about much, and that is the union movement. And they don't want a lot more workers, and they're putting enormous pressure inside the Democratic Party to restrict the number of visas, the number of guest workers, and that is a potential problem in the House for the growth wing of the GOP. Thank you, Carl. Well, but the unions and the Chamber of Commerce, the business community, I think have worked very constructively on immigration reform. And that's why I think all the stars are aligned. You have labor and business agreeing on most issues. I think you have most mainstream Republicans, both in Washington and outside Washington, believing this is the time. So again, I do think it comes down to, is John Boehner, what's the pathway? Because he could decide to pass this with less than a majority or, or close to that. 
to heal his party more broadly. That's the decision that he's going to be faced, because I do think the Senate, it's not going to be easy, but you're going to get a good vote in the Senate, the President's willing to sign it. All attention, the eyes of the country now are going to be on the House of Representatives. Uh, this, this decision by the House leadership has not been made and won't be made for a number of months, because remember, Boehner's attitude is, is that the House has made a mistake over the last several decades in having only five people matter, the Speaker, the Majority Leader, the Majority Whip, the Chairman of the Rules Committee, and the Chairman of the Subject Matter Committee, and they decide these big complex pieces of legislation. He thinks that's a mistake. So he wants the committee, in this case, particularly the Judiciary Committee, to do its work, and he wants the caucus to do its work. So I think he's going to make that decision, and it's going to be a test of leadership at the end of the day. Let me make one other quick point. Back to Gwen. This issue of immigration will be settled with the administration doing less rather than more. The more the president intrudes into this process, the more political it becomes, the more difficult it becomes to pass. That's why the Democrats, led by Schumer, even before the president went to Las Vegas to make his speech about it, went to him and said, basically, cool your jets, leave it up to Vice us. The president from Carver, I do want to move on. We only have a few minutes left. And I want to talk about that remarkable um, reunion. Uh, this week, Chris Christie and President mm -hmm. Obama went back uh, to the Jersey Shore. We showed them uh, right there having a good time. Uh, Christie was a much better ball player in this in this context <laughs> than the president. Uh, and Quinn, I guess when you look at that, and he is a little bit smaller now after that uh, that surgery. Yeah, uh, Christie's thinking first things first. Let me get reelected uh, governor of New Jersey. Worry about president later. Well, which is pretty smart if you want to get reelected governor of New Jersey. He's running these really lovely gauzy ads in New Jersey where it's like Christie the governor. <laughs> I mean, what's not to like he's about that? He's up by like that? 30 points yeah, or he's, so. He's, up, he's, he's going to do fine in New Jersey. And then he will, and, and he knows that if he wants to run in 2016, he will cope with whatever, whoever his Republican critics are when the time comes. It's, who is he going to run against? That's the question. Will this, problem, will this be a problem for Chris Christie? I don't if he think decides there was any downside for this this week. There's still some you know, soreness about what happened before the election in 2012. It was about nine days before the election. The president, the president, president, so effusively. But in this, I don't think there's any downside. I think Christie's calculus look is if I get 58 60 percent and win in New Jersey I can point to the Republicans and say you want somebody to win in a, in a Democratic state and rack up big numbers I can do it I just did it especially because Republicans want to win again and as Bob Dowell said right now the party should be closed for innovations and and uh, there is a lot of that feeling in the Republican Party whether uh, articulated or not so I think Christie is in a very strong position to be the Republican nominee. Let's see if Karl Rove agrees with that. I think this is all premature. We'll have several <laughs> geological ages come and go before the 2016 Thank you, election. <laughs> and uh, we'll all be pontificating about it. But uh, you And know, this embrace of President Obama won't matter. No, I don't, I don't think so. I think, I think Paul's right, though. There is a little bit of residual from last fall. Uh, and it wasn't that it just happened once, but it happened several times. And then the interview with the Fox reporter where, rather than saying, of course, I'm going to be with the president when he comes to my state during a time of difficulty, he excoriates the Fox reporter. But but look, this this, this is several geological ages will Will come and go, and these these memories will di dis dissipate, and, and new memories will be created. David, you get the last well, word on this. I think the this. strong response to the governor and the president being together speaks to the American people's hunger for their leaders, actually, of both parties to work together. I mean, they couldn't be crying out more loudly. But I agree with Carl. We got many lifetimes. I think the question, though, is if he does run. Uh, you know, can he get through those conservative gates of Iowa and South Carolina, where his numbers in those states, because again, the Bachman wing of the party is so strong in those states. If Chris Christie runs and can survive until the big delegate states of California, New York, New Jersey, uh, Illinois, uh, he'll probably have a pretty good shot. The question is, can he get, you know, if he gets 4% in Iowa and 3% in South Carolina, that's going to be hard to get out of I am not going back to the straw poll. <laughs> I don't care how much you, you make have to it. Not. Bachman's <laughs> resignation <laughs> retirement probably means the end of the yeah, Iowa yeah, yeah. straw <laughs> poll. As and everybody as everybody is going to cheer that as we say goodbye. That was really great, guys. Thank you very much. David Pluff is sticking around to answer your questions for our web extra. Check it out at abcnews.com slash this week.